All right, we're back here with uh, our mechanics and material sequence. Hopefully, you'll be able to describe the deformation due to bending, and uh, and we'll derive the flexor formula. And I know how excited you get when you hear the word derive, but this will be fun a little bit. So let's consider a prismatic beam, all right? So that means it's got the same cross-section throughout, all right? All right? Let's say consider, consider a prismatic beam. Matic beam right here, okay, and it's undergoing. So let me draw this right here. Bam, got my straight edge, got a little rectangle going. So it's got this beam right here, and let's say this line is straight and straight right here, and then give it some 3D. So I'll just draw a regular kind of a rectangular beam cross section here. It could be any shape, all right, so it doesn't have to be all rectangular all the time, but here. Just for illustration's sakes and just to make it easy for me to draw and keep it rectangular. And here I have a coordinate system here that, let's see, we'll say this is the plus y direction this way, uh, plus z that way, and then plus x down through the middle, okay? And we're going to show later that this neutral axis of this beam, that this x runs through the neutral axis, and is, uh, um, is, is at the centroid of the cross-section. But here, let's take uh, um, this beam is subjected to an internal moment or some loading that causes pure bending. So here I have a moment. This is a moment about the Z on one end, moment on the Z right here. And I've drawn it so that I have compression. What's going to happen is when this thing beams, I have com this bends. I was going to have compression at the top, tension at the bottom. And when this thing deforms, it's gonna it's gonna bend like this. Okay, so I'm gonna exaggerate the the deformed shape here. Let's see, I got this right here. Using a piece of Tupperware to make my bent shape. You know what I'm saying? Tupperware. All right. And let's see here. Let's make this a little cleaner. All right. So I took a little second to to make this uh you know clean up the drawing a little bit. And here, this is uh, uh my deformed shape here. And let's say my neutral axis is this, this blue line. I'll call this the neutral axis right here. Whoa, right there. And then I have a neutral axis for this cross section, which we're going to learn this neutral axis runs through the centroid of the cross section right here. And this thing had this length L. This whole beam had this length L. Bam that whoa that's not very good but you get the idea okay and, and what you notice here is, if you ever bend anything is that that this part right here the side in compression this right here well well if you even if you don't know what is compression or tension it, what you'll notice is that when you bend it and make a happy face the top part shortens okay this this top line here will actually shorten which implies that it's undergoing compression. And this bottom line here, which I will use a blue, a dark blue right here, this bottom line right here elongates, which indicates tension. Tension right here, okay? And, and what's more is that the vertical lines, these vertical lines here, these vertical lines that might have been here and let's say let's put one uh, um, let's put one right here right here will rotate okay these lines will actually rotate right so initially they were like this and now there's some angle or some rotation that occurs but for all of our stuff our, our equations to be correct these lines will also they rotate but they remain straight okay which means that the effects of shear, which we're going to learn later, the effects of shear are not, uh, this is a slender beam element uh, that is undergoing a, a clean deformation for bending, okay? Right? Another thing you might notice is that this middle line where the, where the neutral axis is, this line, this line, this neutral axis, this NA, the neutral axis, remains unchanged, unchanged, unchanged. Okay. It, it was a length L to start, and it's a length L right now under bending. All right, so let's zoom in on, a, on an element. Let's, take, let's consider an element of 
this beam the before deformation. So here I have, let's just take a cut out right here. So I'm going to zoom in on this thing, this piece right here. Prior to deformation, I've got, uh, let's see here. Let's move it down a little bit over here. So I have prior to deformation, I've had this. So here and here, and I've zoomed in on a piece. I'll just draw it in 2D here. Bam, right here. And, and this is a, a segment uh, DX. Let's just call it delta X right here. Some segment, bam, delta X that I just cut out right here. So this is delta X. I just cut that out. And here, just to zoom in, this is my, my neutral axis line. Neutral axis line. I have a Y coordinate that's zero here, and I'm going to say that it's positive upwards. Okay, it's plus Y this way in the positive Y direction, right? Positive Y direction. Oh, and, and let's say that we, this is the plus Y direction right here. Okay, plus y direction, and here we want to look at a st or study a segment right here. This I'll draw in gray. This line segment right here of this right here, bam, right above above the neutral axis at a let's say a distance y. Okay, at a distance y. You have to forgive me. Don't don't get confused. But this is at a location y. It has an initial width delta s. Okay, or initial length of delta S, this segment here. And I want to know what happens to it after I deform it. And I deform it, and I look at the same segment here. Bam, and I take this segment out. And let's see if I can draw this well. Give me a minute, I'll pause, and I'll draw it. All right, so I, I, I move things around just while I paused here. And, and here, this is my, this right here is my before deformation or before loading. Before loading before before loading and then after loading or with deformation after loading i have some deformation that occurs after loading uh applying a static load i deform this and here is my neutral axis here here is my y axis which continues to be if you will right here here's my y Oh, not my Y. That's my zero for Y. And then my positive Y continues to go, you know, with small deformation, still, quote, unquote, straight up, right? And here, this, this delta S segment becomes here, this segment, and it has a new length because we've observed by bending something that it, the line actually shortens delta S prime. Some new length, okay, some new D delta S right here. And then this neutral axis line, neutral, this neutral axis remains unchanged. It's still a length delta X, okay. So here is, I'll call this, this is still delta X, okay, or delta X right here. Bam, okay. And, and so I can, I can relate these lines right here so I could say hey if I look at this like the line that comes or the center of curvature of this segment bam, the radius of curvature I mean right here okay right here if I draw lines I'm gonna intersect at a point and this is gonna be my my if you will my center of curvature and here this will be to this line Rho would be a radius of curvature. So this is radius of curvature, of curvature, right there. Bam. Okay, and and I can call this my my angle change or my angle here. This angle right here, I can call this bam delta theta right here. I will say that that this location. Right here, this is a distance y still, okay? Still a distance y as it was before in the undeformed. And then my extreme distance, I will call here my farthest distance. I'll call that my distance c, okay? To the extreme edge of, from my neutral axis, okay? This would be my extreme distance right here. 
And because I have small deformations, for small deformations with the small deformation assumption, I can say that this, for small angles, for, for small angles and deformations, okay, for small deformations and w using, uh, you know, tiny triangles kind of deal. So here we know this delta x is rho delta theta, okay, and then this this delta s prime this delta s prime is equal to the radius, the radial distance from here, I'll do it in purple, from here to here, right? The, this radial distance, which is rho minus y, rho minus y times delta theta. This right here is just to be clear, this is rho minus y right there. And now, if I try to calculate the normal strain going on here, and I'll, I'll do this in red, right? So the normal strain, so here, normal strain at some distance y from the neutral axis at y from Na, okay? I would have here, I'm going to use my symbol for normal strain, would be the, the final length minus the original length, or my change in length, which is that delta S minus delta S, or delta S prime minus delta S, divided by the original length, okay? And that just becomes, right here, this delta S, is this original length is the same as delta X, right? This delta X, so this becomes rho minus Y times delta theta minus rho delta theta divided by rho delta theta okay so it's this is the same as delta s before deformation okay delta s okay and this delta s prime is after deformation and here this is how i would you know this would be an, an expression for my normal strain at that point or at this line right here and and here you know you can see all the delta thetas canceled uh then i have rho minus rho canceling uh, so this epsilon is equal to minus y over rho. And, and this is significant. This is my normal strain, okay, at some location y. And it shows that with this moment or the loading that's applied, anything above the neutral axis is experiencing a negative normal strain or a contraction, okay? And here, what's also important is that this is, if rho is constant, which it is, okay, rho being constant, this strain, the normal strain, varies linearly, varies linearly on the cross-section. And that's a really important result. That's something that, that sticks with you for a long time with respect to bending. It's just, you know, it's one of these basic things that you have to know about, about normal strain and, and bending. It's linear. It varies linearly over the cross-section. All right, so when I come back in part two of this video, we'll take a closer look at the cross section and then finish the derivation for the, for the normal, uh, I'm sorry, for the flexure formula. All right, take it easy. See you in the next video.